You've got a song to brighten up this place. A red hat and horn to match your face. Tapes Rolling is made possible in part by a grant from the Dayton Hudson Foundation on behalf of Dayton's and Target stores. Here we go. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm looking for Steven. Which might you be? Are you Steven? No, you're My name is Brian David Sostek, and I deliver singing telegrams to pay the rent. Speaking of heads, ah, uh, that checks, of course, the brainwave. For you, how about that movie stand up and join me there? Mr. The boy, good. Very good. Nope, not bad. Go. Oh, oh, oh. I put performer down on my IRS forms. That pretty much covers it. Leaves it up to your imagination. And to mine. <laughs> oh gosh, we're running on a tight schedule here. Here we go. Anniversary CD. I'm guessing I'm probably in the uh, bottom 15 or 20 percent in terms of income. I mean, what do you do with a mylar balloon after it's deflated? You know, line your bird cage for the rest of the bird's life with it or something? There's no good use. I have a friend who was, or I didn't know him that well, but he was working at like General Mills or something. And for to like two years. His, his job was to sell one cereal, and he hated it. He was making incredible money, but he hated it. I love what I'm doing. Oh, man. Okay, special information they give us sometimes. She broke her nose as a child, and the doctor actually sewed a button on top of it to keep it in place. I don't know what that means. See, this is a nice clean bathroom. I really judge a place by its bathrooms now. All right, you ready for me? She downstairs? Who's this for? Oh, for Jennifer. Okay. Oh. You know what I know about yeah, it? Yeah, she's downstairs. She's downstairs? I'm not sure. You couldn't find her? No. Oh, there she goes. And it's off into the closet. Come on out of here, Jennifer. There you go. Don't be shy. Now, Jennifer, I tell you what. <clears throat> I'm just going to coax you gently out of here. By, well, one very one simple line. One simple line. I'm going to coax you out of there. All right. You see, <clears throat> the more you cooperate with me, the sooner I'm out of your life. There we go. Here she comes. Very good. All right. Very nice indeed. Comics have it easy. Hell, I mean, everybody paid a ticket. They're drinking something. And they're sitting in a warm place. They're ready for you. They're waiting for you. Whereas here, you're coming in and interrupting their business day, pulling them off the phone, doing whatever it takes. Tell you what, <clears throat> I'm not only here for a singing telegram, but I've also been sent here to give you a little examination. Yes, watch it, watch it. Okay, she's still here. So it's even more important to get them on your side, and if, if you can get something personal about them. How about that affordable brain scanner right on top of your head? Now, <clears throat> all I'm going to do here is just check the brainwave, so you just start thinking, okay there, Jennifer? You just go ahead and just start to any... Anytime you want to just start, though, you can just... Sometimes that means you have to pick on somebody right away. <laughs> it's a terroristic threat, that's okay. Yeah, well, I'll show you terroristic threats. You know, you want, you want terroristic threats? Here's a terroristic threat. I'm a doctor. I'll sew a button on your nose if you don't watch it there, kid. Yeah, that's My right. dad is dead. Holy mackerel! It's like flirting. Flirting's all about subtlety. You gotta know how far you can push it. And just, and just push it a little too far. Just okay, a little right, bit too far. But not far enough to cause trouble. All I need you to do in front of everyone here, the camera included, is shake my tambourine. <laughs> yeah, can you do that? What do you say, huh? Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, that didn't take long to convince her, huh? And you were asking if I was easy. All righty, I like that. Anything I'll get this over <laughs> <Yeah>. Anything? <laughs> Excuse us, we'll be uh, out of the file room in just a minute. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, I guess we're staying out here. Now, the way this works is when I play the kazoo, you shake the tambourine. You got it, kid? I think so. All right, you ready? Yeah. No, you're not. You're missing one very important thing, and that would be your <gasps> Kiss Me, It's My Birthday banner. Holy mackerel, those things are hot commodities. They're just disappearing like hotcakes out of here. 
people are like, you know, deers caught in the headlights. They're just too confused to, to try to escape. Uh, do take a happy, 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 happy. You thought the song would be over, didn't you? Give me that. <laughs> and then you take a birthday, 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 birthday. Hope away, kid, I'm still here. First you take a happy birthday, then you take a birthday. Happy. Oh, Put twice them. As much as you can. All right, well, that's so much for the song. See you later, folks. Put them together, and this is what you've got. You've got a song to brighten up this place. A red hat and horn to match your face. Disturbing your daily routine. Whoever sent this must really be mean. And in trouble, I'd imagine. But we thought that you would enjoy this more than some silly oh, 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 oh. Thank you. A personal gift just for you. Now have no fear and give a cheer because this song is a room. So happy birthday, give her a hand, how about that? I think I do more babies than anybody else. Um, you know, because of my natural adorability. <clears throat> Did a baby once at, um, God, what's that? Joe Sensors, Sports Bar and Grill. All right, so we got that. Uh, we got the bib, all right? At the height of Lunch Rush, and they really didn't have a place for me to change. And the diaper. That's the costume. <laughs> it doesn't leave much to the imagination, does it? OK. Luckily, I, had, I mean, I had the diapers on underneath my sweats. So I talked to the hostess. She was cool. She knew what was going on. She said, look, you can stand over by that half wall and just, you know, undress there. I do use only cloth diapers, by the way, and I just don't believe in you know, plastic. It just doesn't, it's not. I start, to, I start to get undressed, pull off my shirt, and in a flash, there's this guy standing next to me going, hey, 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 hey. What are you, what is this? What, how far down are you going to go? And I said, just to the diaper. And he said, Jim, what, what is this going on? I said, don't worry, it's an Eastern Onion singing telegram. It's been cleared with the owners. And he said, I am the owner. <laughs> and I was like, hello, Miss Hostess. So she came over, and it was one of the owners, and she explained what was going on. And he was like, oh, all right, I guess so, well, whatever. And then, uh, I was finishing undressing, I pulled down my sweats, and I'm, I mean, for God's sakes, I'm bent over in diapers, trying to pull these sweats off over my shoes, all right? And from behind me, I hear, what do you think you're doing? And I turn around, it's this muscle neck bouncer. Guy must have been like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, just waiting for the slightest provocation to throw me outside in the winter in my diapers. And so I turned around and in a very appeasing, they said, ha singing telegram. <laughs> Hello, 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 and hello, you must be shocked. Yes. yes, that's right. I I did think I had the right person. You were the first person to blush and say, Muscle Cross birth, the birthday girl. My dear, won't you stand up and join me? There you go. Very good indeed. Here we go. Yes, very good. Yes, that's right. We're celebrating a birthday today here, folks, here at the Russian hut. My dear, seeing as I am the man of your dreams, I thought we could, you know, recreate some of your dreams for your birthday right here, right now. Hmm, what do you say, huh? So if you could just clear the table off. And clear the... All right, fine, we'll start with another dream then. Hmm? <laughs> How about the dream in which I would tell joke after terrible joke after terrible joke? Do you call that? That's a nightmare. Where, yes, well, that's uh, all one and the same for me. <laughs> now, why did the banana go out with the fig? I have no idea. No, that's all right, I've got the answer. That's the way jokes work. Yeah. That's right. The banana went out with the fig because it couldn't find a date. <laughs> a date. There you go. All right. Some of the time. Yes, you thought that was bad. Wait till you hear this one. What did one tonsil say to the other? <sighs> Why, you'd better get dressed. I hear the doctor's taking us out tonight. <laughs> yes. All right. Hey, it's her dream, not mine. All right. I've told those two jokes for three years. They take on a new, kind of this weird sublime level. They are not joke anymore. They're meta joke. They don't exist for me as jokes. So. I'm also really terrible at remembering jokes. I work much better on the fly, so that's why it's part of the reason I just tell the same two over and over again. God, are they bad. This is inconspicuous, isn't it?
This, this woman liked to eat sand as a child. That's one of my little bits of information I have on her. Elevator's here. Let's race. I, excuse me, pardon me. Well, no, not quite. Almost, though. She just left before I got here. Well, sorry, she's gone. I wonder if that was her getting off the elevator. Could have been. Could have been. Well, we'll find out later, won't we? But I also carry with me the gorilla, classical gorilla. I mean, what singing telegram artist <clears throat> would be complete without his gorilla costume? And, uh... Oh, the Grim Reaper, that's always a fun one. Which is nothing more than this scary skull mask. I did one once where I was walking into a hotel. I was supposed to meet my contacts in the hotel bar and then go up to a room. So, yeah, okay, I'm in the co costume. That's an easy costume to put on. I just threw it on over what I was wearing, and I walked into the hotel bar. And usually when you walk into a place, you know, the Grim Reaper, people are like, oh, gosh, I hope it's not my time. <laughs> you know, people pointing, laughing, whatever. This time, everybody was absolutely silent, just staring at me as I walked past. And, I mean, it was really obvious that it, that it was, you know, something going on. And I was thinking, God, what, you know, I know my fly's not down because I don't have a fly in this costume. I don't know what turns out minutes before I had arrived, literally minutes before I had arrived, paramedics had removed a guy who was, at that time, dead from a heart attack. You know, I don't know if they ever revived him or not, but he was dead. So some guy had just died there, and boom, here I go, oop da doop da doo in my Grim Reaper costume. <laughs> it's all about timing. This here is the worst part of the job. And that is putting on cold coconuts. There's nothing like putting on cold coconuts. Oh. Ah. And the ubiquitous Groucho Marx glasses. There, now I'm funny, see? Just a moment, please. Yes, all right. You're going to get two moments. Here we go. Uh, he's in the next office over there. All right, here we go. Which you be? Are you Stephen? Are you Stephen? That's you, my friend. Come on out here. Yes, that's right. I understand that today is your anniversary. Is that correct? No, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, yeah, your anniversary. Not bad for a guy who's never met you though before. How about that? Yes. Shoot my wife. Yeah, you're gonna shoot your wife. Well, I guess it's the last anniversary you'll be celebrating. Yes, well, then I better make it worth your while. How about that? I do have a singing telegram for you, but uh, okay. before I begin anything, I need to explain. You see, whoever sent me here, whoever that might be, actually wanted to send you for your anniversary to sunny Hawaii. However, yeah, that's a pretty big however, because uh, obviously this ain't Hawaii. Yeah, you've been outside lately, pal? Huh? Yeah, I've been outside. <laughs> yeah, it ain't Hawaii, that's for sure. You see, they had a little problem with the baking soda, whoever they were. Uh, baking soda, yeah, they, they couldn't raise the dough, uh, Stephen. They couldn't raise the... It gets worse, believe me, it gets much worse. Uh, uh, Stephen, you see, the island where I grew up, uh, Prairie Island, maybe you've heard about it. Yeah, it's been in the news a lot lately, actually. Explains a lot, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah. You see, we had a tradition of doing a special little dance on special occasions, such as today, and, uh, well, how'd you like to see Stephen join me in a happy anniversary hula? Huh? How about it, huh? There we go. Hey, you want to see him dance? There we go. All right, very good. Now, Stephen, you and I are going to do a little hula here, all righty? Okay. Or in your case, a big hula, yeah. All righty, pal, you're with it, and I like that. Here we go, a happy anniversary hula. I want to hear some good sound effects there before I'm coming after you. <gasps> <laughs> Very nice, 
nice. Lay down there, Stephen. I'm gonna give you a little message here, all right? The bottom of the message there is a signature. However, I need to explain something. You see, it's a very special message that I have here. In fact, it's so special that I keep it in a special place. And oh. Stephen, I'm gonna need your assistance one last time. Okay, here we go. All you have to do is reach in on the count of three and grab that message. Here we go. And, ah, uh, three. There it is, right in the coconut, folks. That's right, we're doing a family show here. You just have to reach in and grab it. See where it is? It's right there. That's right, go ahead, just reach in. Careful, I'm ticklish. Okay, ooh, ah, oh, that's Steven. Ah, please, <laughs> you're married. Ah, there we go, thank you very much. <gasps> All righty, I'll read that one to you. Okay. Here we go, you just relax. Here's a little tambourine roll for you. <laughs> Roses are red. We bet you are too. This little surprise is to say, I love you. From Ray. Yes, that's right. How about that? There you go, my friend. That's for you. And Thank now, you. I would like to wish you a very, you. very happy and slightly embarrassing anniversary from everyone here. The ones who sent me. And of course, happy anniversary from Eastern Onion singing telegrams. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Steve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm going to shut the door. <laughs> I got to say, this is not a job for the, for the politically correct. Because, you know, the politically correct, they want to have their morals legislated for them, right? Everything's going to be set down in rules, what you can, can't say. You can, you can try to live that way, but... It's not going to be much fun. You know, Barbara, you asked me what I learned about people. I think some people, some people don't want to be happy. They always want to find an excuse not to be happy. And for those people, I'll do my damnedest, but I just pity them. You got to have a sense of humor about yourself. God knows I do for doing this job. Some people just don't have a sense of humor about life. You know? You know those people you shouldn't send a singing telegram to. Yeah. Too bad, because they're the people who need it the most, you know? Hello, 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 hello there. How are you doing, my dear? I understand that it is your birthday, is that correct? Monday. Yes, well, close enough for a guy who's never met you before, my dear. I haven't had any... If people just relax and roll with the punches, then they always come out all right. But if they tense up and they want to get it over with, and I'm not being cooperative. Just get on with the song, she's thinking. Just get on with the song. And it's just hell for him. You shake the tambourine, all right? When I play the kazoo, you shake the tambourine. Got it? Okay. All right, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're missing something. <laughs> yes, you know what you're missing? Yeah, well, no, you're not, actually. I hate to break it to you. You're missing your... Ah, oh, kiss me. It's my birthday banner. Ooh, how about that? Once again, I ask you to please calm down, Lynn, because if, if, you, if you keep up this, you know, this boisterous activity, I won't be able to continue. There we go. All right, here we go. Left arm there. Very nice. All right. Good, lovely. Doesn't that look good? You know it. Yes. Yes, so patient. <laughs> now, once again, my dear, a very, very happy birthday from Eastern Onion singing telegrams. Keep up the good work, kiddo. I knew I was doomed when I left the office and I got off the elevator downstairs. You and just missed him by I saw him and I went, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I left and went, oh, my God. And I was right. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Go away. Get the hell out of my office or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> One of my toughest jobs ever involved a woman, I think it was her 90th birthday. They call up Eastern Onion and say, yeah, we've got this. our mother is going to turn 90 years old. She had a stroke. She doesn't walk. She doesn't use her hands. She's deaf on the left side. She can't see out of her right eye. She's sometimes incoherent, and she doesn't laugh very much. We want you to make her happy. So I was like, okay. So I went ahead and did it. And this woman, I mean, completely non-communicative. You know, her facial muscles moved a little bit, and her, and her eyes a little bit. I could tell she was watching me. I knew she was watching me the whole time. And at the very end, almost the very end, I got her to crack a smile. And they were thrilled. The family was just thrilled. Gave me a big tip and, you know, called in the office and they were just delighted. That was probably, you know, that was one of the most enthusiastic responses I've had. I have to be coaxed to put this thing on. And everybody at the office pretty much knows it because whenever they call with a clown, they always have an apologetic tone in their voice. 
because of, for a couple reasons. First of all, because when you do this, along with the rainbow head wig, <laughs> you know, you're supposed to put makeup on too. And that's a pain in the ass. And this thing, here we go, that's... But the worst part about it is that you have to do it for little kids. And I mean, I, you know, little kids are great. I love little kids. Really, I do. But I scare the hell out of them. <laughs> I've had bad luck with this thing, no matter who, you know, from age zero, which is sometimes they get these, like, six-month-old babies. They want you to deliver a singing telegram to them. Like, lady, your kid's not going to understand a word I'm saying. But they want it anyway. They're paying the money, so we go and do it. it scares the hell out of them. I don't know. I'm not good with kids on this one. Sometimes I really want it, like, I wonder what it's like to work in an office with other people. I mean, I know I'd never last. <laughs> I just wouldn't. But sometimes I just want to hang out with those people. You know, I'll do something. It'll seem like a great group of people, and I want to stick around and have a drink with them if it's at a bar. So you know, somebody that you do a telegram for, you want to hang out with? Yeah, sometimes. Just if I get a good feeling from them, definitely. Granted, I mostly, mostly uh, do shows for women because they send men to women and women to men. You know, if there's some woman that's, for some reason, attractive, and I don't mean physically, I mean, you know, like, they have a good time with it. And they're just, and I think, hey, yeah, that, you know, that'd be kind of cool to hang out with this person and see what they're like. And then I realize, it's a fantasy life you're living. A fantasy life. Get out of your costume and get on with it. <gasps> And thusly it is. So I better go in and check about this one. I'm going to have to be sneaky about this because it's a bartender. No. You want music, honey? You got it. Yes, that's right, my dear. You got Easter Indian singing telegram for you. How about that? That's right, Caroline, right out here. There you go. Go ahead. Come on, honey, baby. Right here. There we go. Very good. We're going to come right on out here. Very nice indeed. I tell you what, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce myself properly. The name is Dr. Fixiabod von Quackenheimer. <laughs> Good, all right. You can call me Dr. Quack if you like, or you can just call me if you like. Yeah. I love making people laugh. I'll, no matter what I'm going to do, I'll always be making people laugh. Trying to. <laughs> Ooh. There you go. Yeah, fellas, come on. You should be getting excited about this. I'm about to strap an honor. Here we go. Left arm through there. Watch the drink. Don't spill. Let me just get that there. Oops, let me hold on a second. There we go. All righty. Oh, I'm through. And we're right over here. Hi there. I will be with you in just a second. All righty. Oh, hi there. Don't tell you. <laughs> now, I, I need to ask you good people here. Before I leave, what occasion such as this, what birthday would be complete without the birthday song, right? Hmm? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? All right. Right, pal? Hmm? Right. All right. So we're going to sing the birthday song to you the way it was meant to be sung. You just relax. Hey, Tootsie, you worked hard enough, haven't you? <laughs> the rest of you, please, raise one finger up in the air. Go ahead, don't be shy. Any one of the ten will do. Very good. Take that finger, place it across your top lip, just like so. Miss Maddie, you having trouble getting it up over there? <laughs> Sorry, you seem so young for those troubles, but yeah, that's all right. All right, here we go. On the count of three, a happy birthday to Toots. A one, a two, get your finger ready. A two, three. <laughs> I mean, you know, seriously, I can't complain for a dull life. Mm-mm. God, I had two really, really memorable, very tough jobs in which the family was enormously appreciative. I went to the home of a girl <coughs> at the request of her classmates, high school girl, who was dying of leukemia. I showed up at the house, and on the front door there was a sign that said, you know, no smoking, oxygen in use, and, and then... Um, when the mother came to the door, she was hesitant about letting me in at all. And, and she said, OK, just a minute, I have to go ask. And so she went in, she came back, she said, OK, you can come in. And it was a, just a tuxedo, it was a balloon delivery, short version. And this girl was on an oxygen you know, mask, and uh, she, she, could, she had to breathe in. You know, she, her eyes were drooping shut, and they'd come back open again and drooping shut. And so, I just kind of stuck with her for a while and got her to laugh a little bit. And I thought that was great. And then I started to leave and she said, she just kind of motioned for me to stop and she told her mother she wanted a photo with me. 
So, oh, okay, that's fine. So I got back there, and she took a couple of breaths off the oxygen mask and then kind of dropped it down. I mean, vanity stays with us till the end, I guess. But she, she dropped it down, and we did the photo, a couple of them, I think. And then I left, and she, you know, that's what she wanted, was just a photo. And she died that night. It was the last photo they ever took of her. It was the two of us together. And I thought, well, there we go. For all the people I've embarrassed and made want to crawl under a desk, maybe made life a little bit easier, death a little bit easier for her. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Tapes Rolling was made possible in part by a grant from the Dayton Hudson Foundation on behalf of Dayton's and Target stores. This program was produced by KTCA, a Minnesota original.